so hello to all the panels and then all the participants here. Um, I'm Dr. Eric. I'm from the Department of Biomedical Imaging, Faculty of Medicine. So I'm I myself is uh, I'm an interventional radiologist. Uh, so um, today my my pet project I present to you uh, my brain atlas uh, reinforced learning using gamification techniques uh, in radiology. So um, just a little bit of context of what we do in the hospital is a bit different than everyone. Uh, I would say the majority of our work is in clinical services. So uh, we do a lot of CT, MRI. I myself do a lot of procedures in, in the hospital and we, it this takes 80% of our time. So, uh, but we are also what we call teaching centers. So we, we train MBBS students, we train Master of Radiology. And uh, of course we do a big part of it, of it also we do research. So uh, why, why is this tree diagram important? Because I, I would say we are doctors first, then researchers second, then we are teachers the last, because uh, we are in fact not trained in teaching, um, which is why a lot of our research tend to go still over to the left side here, which is clinical orientated research. And um, in fact, this it will be my first kind of like a develop a tool to kind of enhance teaching in terms of um, uh, in medicine, that and, and that is also why um, in medicine, uh, if you attend one of the lecture, it tends to be quite old school. And, um, and when uh, you know, if you still go to the older, older you see, you will still be writing on the board, and and you follow along, you will be falling asleep behind. Which is certainly what I did back in my time. I, I fell asleep on all the lectures because it's so boring. So um, just some introduction to my team. Uh, these are my colleagues, they are all uh, doctors, most of it except for Prof. Jimmy, she's a physicist in our department. But uh, so this four supports me in uh, my daily work, which allows me to do things like this. Uh, of course, my mentor, which is um, Prof. Anusha, uh, some of you might know her. Uh, she's, uh, very, she's very, very nice to me. That's why I, uh, she get, give me some leeway to, to do what things that I want. Okay, so... Uh, just a little bit introduction of why, why I do something like this, what the problem statement is, what I, I feel uh, is the problem in medical education, which is uh, especially in anatomy, because anatomy is very important in medicine as well as radiology. In fact, it's so important in radiology. You want me to get part of your, your uh, you know, anatomy wrong in your image, right? Uh, instead of saying left right leg, I say your right leg has problem, then, then that <laughs> you see where the problem is. So, Anatomy in, in medical ed education does not really necessarily translate well into medical practice. Well, so this is an example. So if you are a medical student, you will definitely have this textbook, which is an atlas of human anatomy. And it will look something like this one in the middle, where they draw out the anatomy. And then you come to practice and say, hey, what is this? This is the MRI of the brain. It doesn't look anything like the drawing. So sometimes it doesn't translate well into practice. And uh, you know this is a problem. Um, yeah, and, and because we have different modality, we have CT, we have MR, uh, they all look slightly different to each other. So, and, and the second problem that I come to is that there are some very, very difficult words to spell in, in, in medicine, uh, and especially anatomy. So I've listed two here, is some law, what you look here, no? uh, and, and a, lot of, a lot of time people get the spelling wrong. So traditionally, you look at the book, you say, oh, what you look what you you try to memorize that thing, and you, and you memorize the sound. But when you come to spell it, you get it wrong. Right? And, and this just like penguins and penguins, they sound the same, but when you spell it, you spell it wrong. And, and in medicine, if you get it wrong, then, then there'll be repetition and that's important. So, and the third problem, and the, this is the one that I, I want to deal with the most is it's extremely boring to study anatomical structure. Uh, you look at the image, the image look at you, uh, and, and uh, past five minutes, you'll be falling asleep. And I, uh, this is what I did as well. Uh, and this is very, uh, very pertinent to master students, because master students is very different than uh, clinical students. They do have to work, and their work sometimes exceeds. They don't go back at 5 p.m. Let me just tell you that they work uh, extremely hard, especially during the pandemic. By the time they go home, and this is the case for me as well, when I was a master student, I went home, and I opened my anatomy textbook and I fell asleep and I wake up tomorrow. So um, we need to uh, be able to deal with this. And, and, and it is so, so boring. Let me just tell you this, that, that when I was a medical officer, 
uh, and I was uh, manning the GP session. And if there's patient coming to me and they say, I cannot speak, doctor, uh, my, my uh, remedy is to you either read the Bible or you read the anatomy textbook, you fall asleep, I guarantee you. So, um, so, so to summarize the problem is that uh, this anatomy textbook that's provided now may not necessarily translate all to practice. The difficult spelling, spelling and the dry and boring uh, learning curve uh, in, in anatomy. So uh, there are some uh, fixes as well. So you can get like the textbook like this called Imaging Atlas of Human Anatomy, but it's a big textbook uh, and, and it doesn't help the dry and boring aspect of it. And there's also electronic version that you have to pay in Euro, yeah? <laughs> so not only, not only you have to pay and uh, annually you have to, um, you know, they don't, there's no quiz section, there's just a reference. So what is the solution here? Uh, the solution that I try to come up is actually to build an electronic anatomy reference based on real medical images, make it electronic, make it free, then uh, incorporate a quiz module that allows the user to improve themselves. Uh, they can also verify the spelling mistake. Uh, and of course, you want to make it fun, okay? That is the most important to me, okay? So uh, learning should be fun. And, and how do we make it fun? We give them some uh, gamification element, we make do some token and, and what's not. So uh, I will guide you the process, guide you through the process of how I, I created this module. Uh, because uh, the, some of you may want to know how you know, to develop tools for yourself, and this is how I did it, okay? So how did I make it happen? So basically, if you want to develop a, a tool set, you need to have some computer science uh, skill, okay? So this includes web development, JavaScript language, database integration, and of course, for this module, uh, anatomical knowledge. So uh, I got all my first one, two, three skills from uh, UC of London. Uh, I'm currently actually very luckily by the time that this project come to me, I've already finished uh, year one of a Bachelor of Computer Science. Lab. So that is uh, a bachelor degree that I took uh, with remote learning through UC of London. And I've managed to consolidate all these skills and deploy them using the library. So Node.js, a P5.js, MongoDB, and Heroku is a, is a platform as a service to deploy your website. So the design process, uh, we take the normal MRI and then uh, we label all of it. And then uh, we code the interaction between the website and the user using Node.js and P5.js. So these are all the programming sites. Then we deploy them on Heroku. So there will be a, a database uh, element to it to, to uh, store the, the user score and the login detail that is integrated through what we call a MongoDB. Uh, and once deployed, uh, user, you can see the, the address here. You can actually go to this address yourself and, and try out the module and see whether you, know, you like it or not. Uh, and anyone can register. Uh, so talking about the reference, uh, so this is the reference that we have, uh, I have uh, I created. So let's say you're looking at my brain, you can scroll and all the labels are inside. You can also toggle the um, atlas and to remove all the unnecessary label that you don't need. For example, if you don't want to look at a uh, uh, system, you can tell you don't want to look at muscle, you don't have to look at vessel, you can turn it off, you can turn it on. So these are all the reference. So when you are re the students are reporting, for example, at uh, MRI and they are not sure what they're looking at, they can come to this side and they can, they can have a look at, um, you know, the, the referral structure. So this is just the brain module of it. So um, going to the next one. Okay, so, so this is the quiz uh, component of it. So to make sure uh, they can learn well, uh, you go to the website, you can register. So once you register, you get a free test and then they assign a uh, character to you. So uh, you start out with Stormtrooper because that, that's the most base. Um, Ranking, and then you get uh, you get to answer this pre-test question, which encompass all the the labels. And if you get it wrong, they throw these labels will get thrown into the training list. And once you uh, get into the training mode, uh, they will all display all the things that you get wrong. And once you get them all right, you go for the final test, and they, they give you a final ranking. And you can improve your ranking. These ranking are displayed in the public ranking page. Uh, so uh, this. These are the characters that I plagiarized from the internet. Uh, so you, depending on what uh, scores you get, you, you get the appropriate um, characters and you get the quotes as well that I've, I've somewhat 
uh, Chiki put in uh, later. I'll show you one of it. So this is ranking the ranking list in the this public. So they can compare. You see, there's a lot of participants. They, they really love this module because they get to see uh, who is Master Yoda, who is uh, who is Han Solo, who is still Stormtrooper. So the Stormtrooper will definitely feel more embarrassed about themselves and they will improve themselves. So this is a way to make sure they learn. So okay, so you, you can actually register uh, yourself. And anyone can register. I've opened this to the public. Um, so you can register and then you get your, your, your page. Uh, so you, this is the pre-test. It's an 85 question. You get to answer in one hour. Uh, so it won't tell you whether you get it right or wrong. So that, that the arrow here is what you should answer. You can type it. You should, uh, then once you get, uh, like you say, you see, I get, even I created a module, I got so many things wrong, mainly due to spelling errors. So uh, you see, uh, my test score is 9.4. Uh, then uh, my, there's a cheeky remark here that says your score is as low as the stormtroopers aim because we know the stormtrooper they 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 shoot a lot but they don't hit anything. So um, you can improve. You can start your your training class here, and these are the anatomical list list for you to train. So this will start appearing in your training list. Okay, but the difference is that uh, once once you have uh, you're in the training mode, there's no time limit. And, and when you type it in, uh, they will tell you whether you got it wrong. And if it's wrong, they tell you what's the answer. Okay, so that, that is the second mode. And once you got it right, you do a post-test. That's the same 85 question. They won't tell you whether you're right or wrong. You do it in one hour. And after that, you get your, uh, your final score. So your final score is here. I get 95.3 um, after all the training. Uh, so I have become uh, Master Yoda, and, and the quote is like powerful you have become. Yeah. So, uh, so it will reflect in the public ranking, and um, yeah. So, uh, unfortunately nowadays, um, initially there's a lot of students participating. Halfway through the pandemic hit, and you know UM is a COVID center, and halfway through they got pulled out. So a lot of it, um, can they cannot complete yet. They'll come back uh, when, when um, the COVID situation is improved, they got more time. Uh, so, but those who are completed, so the mean score for this is like 44.7%. There are those who will get lower. Then the, the impressive thing that all of them will get 90% above after the training uh, model. Okay. So actually it's very, very effective improving user knowledge for given modality. So um, yeah, that's all for my uh, presentation. Uh, I think, oh yeah. Um, so. How we address the, the, the problem statement. So we use real images with label. So we introduce a quiz module mode to help users' memory retention. Then we give some gamification element to, uh, to uh, you know encourage uh, competition between users. And, and this is also a very good thing because once they complete the module, they will know that oh I have I have all the brain in the uh, all the anatomy label in the brain I already know. So move on to the to the next body structure. So thank you. So I will um, take your question uh, if anyone has All any right. question. Um, the end of the presentation you have reached, Dr. Eric Chong. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really like that, uh, that, 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 you know, the character thing with the Master Yoda and definitely, I don't know why Darth Vader is one of the powerful one, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, very powerful. Yeah, I know, I know. I don't know why Darth Vader is like that, So, but, but it's, it's really great. I mean, I guess I am one of the fans for Star Wars as well, so yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> that's really interesting, actually. So um, I would like to call uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad Helmi for his questions as a reviewer for uh, this session. Thank you, Dr. Sophia. And very, very interesting, uh, Dr. Eric, uh, your gamification in radiology. Uh, <laughs> I've actually trying and trying your <laughs> your uh, app. Um, yeah, very interesting. Uh, uh, but I, I didn't score anything because I just, you know, um, have the, yeah, the, the lowest rank <laughs> because I don't know more radiology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It will take some time. Like. It's, it's uh, meant for medical uh, Still a stop. And, uh, anyway, so I mean, I like the way you uh, use the you know um, Star Wars uh, what we call it gamification or the the character and and uh, you use the leaderboard uh, leaderboards to uh, increase the engagement. So my question to you is, um, uh, I mean, what's what's different about yours and and you know uh, the things out there and 
how do actually, actually how, how do you how do people you know uh, in other universities in around the world uh, go about in in learning about brain anatomy and how uh, you well yeah yeah so uh, like i say a lot a lot of it um, is is quite traditional so and and still are traditional in fact like they they still go by textbook and uh, and what's not so uh, even in um if you were to see how they learn nowadays they have this virtual anatomy thing that that uh, actually augmented when you put on the thing and and uh, but that's very expensive you see and and of course it still doesn't translate well to to clinical uh, radiology where with the mri images is the same as the what you're quizzing on which which i feel is quite important in that sense uh, if you're talking about um, how radiology is taught outside is is still is still the same let me just tell you that yeah Okay, one, uh, and this is my last question. Oh, sorry, two questions. Just um, no, no uh, that's, that's the, the, how do you rank the, what do you call it, the reward system? Because um, is, is it based on accuracy or uh, time or uh, how is it ranked on the game? No, it, it's just okay. ranked as the number of correct questions you get uh, within the time limit. Yeah, so, so we don't want them to rush. We want them to really think about it. Uh, it's the, the the whole thing, the whole premise is to reward them where when they are get their spelling right and they get their, their anatomy label right, not not rushing for time. Yeah, that's not that defeats the purpose of uh, education. Okay, thank you. That's all from me. Thank you, Dr. Helmi. Uh, okay, since we have a uh, few minutes left, I would like to call Dr. Subarno if you have questions to Dr. Eric. Oh, yes, definitely. I have questions for Dr. <laughs> Eric. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Eric, thank you so much for your presentation. I can see that you are a Star Wars geek, yeah. So it translates into <laughs> it translates into into your 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 profession as well, and it translates so well. I've always been very fascinated with medical education, although I'm not in the medical field. Um, but uh, you know. Um, Thank you for clarifying that uh, in the current context and current situation we are in, medica uh, medical education in Malaysia is still a little bit uh, laid back in terms of uh, being innovative in its approach to teaching and learning. So I'm 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 really very proud of you actually for taking this uh, initiative to you know go out of the box and you know gamification and you building it on your own takes a lot of time. So my first question is, how long did you take to do this? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this takes me uh, two weeks full time like, Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because wow. because it, uh, uh, I, uh, because I, I'm taking myself a Bachelor of Computer Science, so uh, we coded something much more complex than that, and this is uh, just kind of like my um, like pet project, I just on the side see wh whether I can improve things or not. And initially, we, we didn't even include the gamification, we just include the quiz, and people find it so boring. The moment we added up Star Wars, and you'll be asking, the thing just took off. And it, it's just very, very funny because because it's just a small component of it and, and uh, just a, a token of uh, achievement that look, you are this character now and they start talking about it. Wow, what character do you get? Like, how do you yeah. get this character? It's, you know, and, and, and it changes things a lot in my opinion. Yeah. So yeah. Congratulations for, for making it very engaging. You know, so um, what, what are the future plans you have, uh, Dr. Eric, uh, with regards to uh, first you were testing it, really it and then COVID it, came, right? So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I would like to expand it to different models. So this is the only big brain right now. Uh, of course, if it, it, it's well received, then we go to abdomen, actually, in fact, the whole body, uh, in terms of imaging and, and you know, uh, body legs, the hand, and whatnot. So, would be a good reference point because now of course it's just one small module but it all depends whether that i'm still around <laughs> because because at the end at the end of the day i think if you have uh because the, in medicine uh if you notice something why medicine is so far behind because medicine they they, they are so engrossed in, in uh medical services um they, they have no time for other other things in fact and and to, to study computer science, to study is uh, to study tech is, is a big commitment. Uh, and and if you if you ask any specialist out there who has a bachelor of computer science, 
I don't think you can find in Malaysia right now. Uh, which which is why I, I don't know whether I'm I will be still around uh, around when I finish everything because there's a lack of communication between um, medicine and uh, for example the technology. People who develop developing technology does not know what medicine people want, and medicine people don't know how to tell uh, the technology is what they want. Uh, <laughs> so so yeah. But but before I go, of course, I would love to um, you know thank. Uh, that's all the things, that's the whole reason I acquired skills like this one.